Have you ever stopped and thought about all the different birds that we have here at the Ecology Center? How do we go about learning more about the birds? And finding out what birds exactly we have here? Because, I mean, we have such a vital habitat here at Litzinger for them. The prairies, the woodlands, Deer Creek all so important. It provides food, shelter, and refuge for these birds. And some of the birds that you might just normally see here on a regular basis uh, when you come for a visit are definitely not all the birds, right? So what are some of the things that we might even just see on a normal visit? Well, you might stop and see the turkeys as they just kind of walk along on our paths and they stick around all year so that they stand out right really big uh, beautiful bird and then if you're walking through the prairie you might see something like the ruby-throated hummingbirds that migrate through during the year when plants are in bloom uh, nectaring it at the flowers if you walk along Deer Creek during the growing season, you're likely to see some of our seasonal visitors like herons or some of the different types of ducks or geese that they're searching for food or a place to raise their young. Or perhaps up by the glass house or the cabin at one of the bird feeders, you may see some of the very common feeder birds that are very common to the St. Louis area. Or if you're walking through one of our prairie paths later on in the season, you're likely to see a very common visitor to the Ecology Center, the goldfinch chowing down on some member of the Aster family's seeds, like the cup plant shown here. Or you may see a little visitor up around the building, searching around for insects to feed its young. Or if you've been keeping your eye on one of our bluebird boxes, you're likely to see the eastern bluebird or one of the other various visitors to the boxes. But what about those migrants that come through and just temporarily refuel at Litzinger in the spring and the fall? How would you go about tracking these birds? Unless, of course, you had an army of photographers sitting still on the prairie, you know, with a hundred cameras focused on these birds. So if you don't have the capabilities of doing that, how do you go about tracking these birds? Well, if you're like me and you want to know more about this, and I do, I, I want to learn a lot more about these birds that call our place home for even just a short span of time. So if you're like me, let's go talk to our resident bird researcher here at Blitzinger, Colleen Crank. Hi, I'm, I'm Linda Tossing. Um, I work at the World Bird Sanctuary as their bird banding coordinator. And I work with uh, Colleen. Uh, she has worked with our banding team uh, since uh, 2001, I guess it's almost 20 years. Um, I started it as um, working with another person and we, uh, she left and I took over the job and I've been doing that ever since. And we have do several different types of programs at the World Bird Sanctuary, but most of our programs are based on the forested area that we have at the site. And what is unique about um, the Litzinger project that Colleen has been managing is that it's a prairie type uh, habitat. And so it's for, very different than what we have. And so it's really interesting to see what she has um, uh, gotten in at the prairie versus what we have at the center. So we've, um, we've been working together for almost 20 years. Uh, when we first started at the World Bird Sanctuary, we had one net in between feeders and we would band out of the back of our car. 
and so now we have an actual building and we have um, a migration blitz that we have up to 25 nets and two 30-foot canopy nets so we really expanded our location and, and Colleen has been instrumental in making that happen so I'm very privileged to help get her started here and then been working with her so um, I wanted to kind of give you a heads up on what we do at the sanctuary and, and Colleen's involvement in that so I'm going to pass that baton to her so that she can take it forward for the Lipsing Bear Project. Well I actually first started in the education department as a volunteer and the first year I was here I mean you know with Miss Netting I really kind of had that in mind the research part of it and this is an urban area and I was like well what kind of birds are here what you know what's um here during the summer, was here during the winter, and the size of the habitat. And so I approached Linda and I was like, hey, what do you think about mist nutting out at Lipsinger? And you know, we were talking about the habitat, and so that was back in 2008. And so over the years, it's just I want to keep cataloging the birds and see what's here. And with the half mile long and 85 feet wide at some parts, even wider in others, uh, and this deep project that's going through the property, Colleen, uh, how are you looking at that and how that's affecting bird populations here? That is definitely something I'm interested in. So I started doing surveys once a week, um, all, all year long, and I'm misnetting in the fall. What I'm interested in knowing is how the noise and the habitat um, disturbances affecting the birds. Are there bird, birds that are leaving and not coming back? Um, who's staying? And are they breeding here okay? Are they here during the winter okay? Um, I'm just interested in how it's also affecting the migrants with, with the disturbed habitat. Yeah, and I should add that uh, in addition to just that habitat disturbance of them coming through, that was actually mostly woodland and we'll have a more open grassland setting following the project. So I would, I would think it could greatly affect the uh, type of bird that would be using the site now. Oh, definitely. And that's another question is who's going to come in now that we're going to have, you know, improved habitat and how long will it take them to get here? Will we get different species? Will the same birds come back? Oh, yeah. It'll be really interesting to look at throughout the years. Thanks for doing this, Colleen. Oh, yeah, definitely. The little yellow feet. Oh my goodness. Those are so adorable. So when a bird comes up to the table, we have the clips that tell us which net it came from. So like this one is from the prairie net. And the birds come in a bag um, that kind of helps keep them quiet and calm while they're waiting to be processed. Then we refer to our book to see what size band we need. So the book we use to help us identify birds and their ages is this identification guide to North American birds. And the feathers actually tell us a story. They'll tell us how old the bird is with different moat limits. And so there's different illustrations in this book that helps us determine how old the bird is. Um, and though for the birders that are maybe here, there's the flycatcher guide. Um, we've got different flycatchers and they all look the same. So we look at a combination of wing and tail measurements, bill measurements, um, what under the bill looks like. So that we have to fill out this worksheet to help us determine.
No molt. Okay. Parasites? And we, we take wing and tail measurements with our ruler. Uh, 129 for wing, uh, 81 for tail. Wing is 60. Tail is 58. And then with the fly catchers that I talked about earlier, we have to use more precise uh, measurements and so we use cal the calipers to measure their beak. Oh and we afterwards we do weigh the birds. That's another important factor. So we put them in this bag, a cloth bag, put it on in the cup and measure the bird. So the one thing that's interesting are the different size bands that we have for all the birds. We can go from this tiniest one, this is for chickadees and goldfinches, to these really big ones, which are for blue jays and morning doves. And then, so we use pliers to open. This is what they, so that's what it looks like. So it has this post on there to help us open the bands. And then we'll put it in a, put it in a, you know, in one of the appropriate slots. So Colleen, you've wrapped up for the 2020 Miss Nutting Session here in the fall. Uh, so what kind of cool things came out of it? Well, we got a bay-breasted warbler. And I'm really excited about that because it's a first for Litzinger. That's a migrant. Um, I was kind of surprised over the number of Nashville warblers we captured, but they like this kind of, they like this kind of habitat, a shrubby habitat. First time in the nets were gray catbird, northern flicker, and rose-breasted grosbeak. They are here during the year, but I've, we've never caught them in the nest. And I was a little surprised over the number of indigo buntings we captured that were migrating through. And those are the highlights.